And, and so one of, one of your ideas to get more people involved with Summer of Code and the sure. things around that. Sure. So, I mean, how did that happen? Well, so um, we launched code.google.com, Greg Stein and I. This was six plus years ago now. We, oh, we uh, should just give, if people don't know, um, Google Summer of Code is where Google essentially pays people to, what's the, what's the word, flip bits, not burgers, to pay computer science and other students to actually write pieces of open source code for different projects yeah. rather than um, go and get a job at a local Wendy's or something. So. And, and the reality is a lot of people still have to pay for college. Yeah. And, um, and so in the summer they work. And what we wanted is we wanted computer scientists to have a venue uh, to work. And this was something that was inspired by uh, Larry Page, our co-founder. He was like, you know, Chris, we have this problem. We have too many computer science students who aren't doing computer science over the summer, and so they're getting rusty and they're falling behind. And, and, and go fix that. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, Larry. Um, so I came up with Summer of Code to do that. And, and the nice thing about the Summer of Code is also a lot of the work you do in computer science school is very theoretical, and it's very procedural and algorithmic. It isn't very user-oriented, and it's not really platform-oriented. It's, it's more about making you into a good, well-rounded programmer, which I think is a very good thing. Uh, to try to make you into a scientist. But, yeah. you know, in some ways, open source is about engineering, right? It's about creating things that people use yep. and use day to day and, and how it evolves with their platforms and all the rest. So, open source is, in a lot of ways, the ultimate expression of computer engineering in my mind because it's what happens when the market needs something so bad that it does it itself. You know, if you look at the rise of the internet, you know, it's like a commercial provider simply couldn't keep up and they were too expensive, but they simply could not keep up with the demand for new internet servers and sites and the rest. So yeah. open source developers, literally the people who are going to consume these services anyway, said, well, you know what, we're not getting enough service from the commercial world of, open so of, of software, proprietary software development. We have to write our own software if we're mm -hmm. going to do our jobs. And so that's what they did, and they shared it with each other to lessen that load. And that's well, really what open source is for me. Well, that's, that's, that's how family's working. I needed a file server. You needed a file server. <laughs> I needed a file server. That's yeah, and the other things simply job. weren't yeah. doing it. Yeah, you know, that's exactly just, right. We're not working for you. So, and that's how a lot, you know, it, you know, necessity is the mother, right? It's, yeah. It, and open source is really the, the extreme example of that. But, you know, it's a logical example of that, too. So, anyway, so the Summer Code introduces students to that very real part of computer science, mm -hmm. that very real part of computer engineering, which is real user concerns, real consumer desire, real market desire for improved, you know, computer science systems, right? So, yeah. and, and, and so, in, so in that way, it really helps computer science move forward. And it teaches them to work on big projects with other people, which I, to, to yeah, my which, mind, that's yeah, the most valuable really part of important. it, is you can do a computer science degree and never write a program with another person. Yeah. Uh, and yet, if you go out and get a job in, in the actual industry, the first thing you'll be doing is working with someone else, yeah. usually on code that you didn't write. That's right. Um, having to maintain it, having to fix it. Yeah, and, and it's funny too, because at the same time, you know, I look at the movement to project-based learning in a lot of universities is being kind of a bad thing because, you know, students need to execute on their own so they know that they can and also so mm -hmm. that we know their actual ability and skill, right? So it's very hard to judge a group project, right, accurately. Yes, so, see what you mean. I mean, anyone who's been in, in a project-based learning uh, sort of aesthetic in a, in a school knows the first thing you do is you try to figure out who the losers are so you don't get paired up with them. <laughs> you know? Which doesn't help the loser. <laughs> no. And funny, yeah. it, it basically makes the people who would be good at projects anyways do good in school. You know? Uh, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't help yes. the losers. Meaning the people who aren't good at project work aren't good at getting along with other people. It doesn't help them be, get along any better with people. That's a good point. You know? So it, in some ways I don't think it actually does the good that people think it does. Mm. You know? So, but that said, working together is really important. But if you think about it, the brutality of open source <laughs> is such that at the end, people will know how to work with other people, or they'll fail. You know? That's that's something I, I'm hoping that will get addressed as it becomes it more mainstream. It will never get I, better. I, you know, open source I, is a rough place sometimes. <laughs> I, so you know, I mean, doing so, outreach, doing outreach to but, you female know, engineers, people with different backgrounds. I think that women think, will be just as brutal if they're going to be successful in open source. Well, I, and I have to say, in some ways, the brutality is honest. You know, in open source, you succeed if you work at it and if you have the skill needed to be successful at it. Now, the nice thing about Summer it puts of Code a lot of people is it actually puts a mentoring system into place. Yes. I Whereas think before, it was push the people into the acid and see if they're tough enough, right? <laughs> yes, and watch so, them go down and watch them melt. in bubbles. Yes. Now, the nice thing about Summer of Code is we've said to them, listen, these are students. We're going to be nicer to them. <laughs> yes. We're going to try to help them. We're going to try to mentor them. 
We're not just going to reject yeah. them if they're they're horrible. We're going to try to work with them. And yes, some people do not succeed. The Summer of Code is a merit-based program, and we do fail one of our, out of every five students yeah. by the end of it. But it's more because life is intruding, or they discover this wasn't exactly the program for them. But I think it's a good thing. I think it's a really good thing that we have standards like that. But the nice thing about Summer Code is we are good with the students. You know, and in fact, it's you know whenever organizations ask, hey, why weren't we accepted this year? You know, it's because they were bad with students. You know, yeah. it's the only thing that really makes me upset <laughs> and and makes us reject organizations from year one to year two right. or from year three to year four is because if they're bad with students, then they're, they're not They don't welcome. want to be part of the right. be part of the program. Exactly. Because it takes a certain amount of patience to deal with new people, especially people who are often four time zones away and don't speak your language. Yeah. Right? Because we get people, you know, ninety three countries this year. Right? Wow. Uh, those thousand students, 93 countries. Well, that's pretty impressive. So yeah, it's amazing. And, and it really shows that there are people out there all over the world who are just eager for this kind of experience. You know, we have six applicants for every position that we open up. Wow. You know, and whenever we get more than six, we, we make it harder. <laughs> you know? But it's, you know, no, yeah. that's not really true. But it's, it's, it's a remarkable program. Right, and it's and it's really quite unique because if you look at a lot of student programs from computer companies, they're often more about pushing a platform or yeah. or making nice with the university and the rest. And and ours is about the output, getting yeah. more code done, and teaching people how to work in this. And in that two and a half month period that Summer of Code runs, we generate three million lines of code. Wow! Uh, for the it costs us about six million dollars, but if you look at studies on what software costs to create, it is for that two and a half months, probably the most efficient software development organization on the planet. Hmm. In fact, by 10 times, if you believe IBM's numbers. Wow. You know, so it's pretty remarkable, you know. And open source is remarkable still, you know. It's like I just gave a talk in, in, in I think it was Jordan, and, you know, talking about the amount of open source code that's out there. It's about two billion unique lines of code that are out there right now. And that, that's equivalent to about 10,000 people working for 10 years straight. You know, yeah. I mean, it's a staggering amount of productivity. 